Hello, I'm Abhilash Ravi Kumar. I'm a senior product manager at Amazon Web Services. I'm the product manager for Elemental Media Store, and uh, I'd like to give you a brief overview about the product. Uh, what's the best way to use it, who is it specifically designed for, and what it costs. We launched Elemental Media Store in December 2017, and we built it specifically as a live origin. It's not just a live origin, it is a live pass-through origin. Now, the reason why that makes a difference is because a pass-through origin is lightweight. We don't do packet-level inspection. Every single packet that enters Media Store is immediately exposed back to CDNs for it to be uh, published to a player. Uh, the advantage of this is that we have low predictable latency across our workflows. We also offer strong read after write consistency, which is quite important in video workflows because if you have an old manifest sitting in there, and if a CDN thinks that is the newest manifest, then you're going to have uh, a looping of your segments on the player end. And we wrap all of these performance characteristics through integrated security management in the form of uh, role-based authentication. We have container-level policies. We also offer course policies. We also have a strong audit trailing in the form of cloud trail and access logs. Here's a brief overview of our architecture. So the life cycle of a segment is as soon as a customer does a put, it passes through a load balancer and enters the media store data plane. So in our data plane, we make a storage request in three discrete availability zones in our high-speed storage tier. Now, we return a 200 back to the customer only after we get a positive response from at least two of the three availability zones. So once we send a 200 back, this object is now ready to service any gets from the customer. For the first five minutes, all gets are going to be serviced from our high-speed storage tier. But in the background, as soon as the object has been persisted, we also do an asynchronous copy back to Amazon S3. The reason why we do this asynchronous copy is because S3 has a very strong durability model. So your objects are going to live safe there even if the ephemeral tier fails. So after five minutes, all your GET requests are going to go to this S3 version of the object that you would store and not from the high-speed memory. From our research, we found that five minutes is about like the sweet spot for most workflows where objects are really hot for a short period but don't have that much access time later on and S3's performance characteristics work. When we talk about performance, I always like to talk about quantifying performance. So we ran a high-stress workload. It was actually run by one of our large customers. And they ran this workflow on S3. And they were noticing about 350 milliseconds of latency for puts and gets. And there was a lot of spikes with a lot of spikes beyond the one second mark. Now, the same workflow running on Media Store was a lot more predictable. It's a lot more stable. It was also a lot better in terms of latency. So our latency was about half of what it was seen on S3. Here's a couple of screenshots that I got from our service logs this past week, where we are observing on the P39s level about 100 milliseconds of latency for puts and about 75 milliseconds for gets. This is more than sufficient for most of our customers, and it works really well with video. Another dimension of performance is chunk transfer encoding. So chunk transfer encoding is from the HTTP 1.1 world. So in the normal world, what would happen is before an object is ready for download, it has to be completely uploaded. Now, this creates a choke point. This is especially bad for video because video has long segments. So if an encoder takes about four seconds to create a segment, it's going to take four seconds before any of the downstream processes can even access that object. So the chunked CMAF spec, which is a video-specific spec, talks about chunking these segments. So you could chunk the same four-second segment into a lot smaller pieces, such as about 50 milliseconds. So instead of waiting for four seconds before the first object is being read by your CDN, you could start reading from like 50 milliseconds. Now, this has really strong uh, latency implications, and we've observed latencies of sub two seconds end to end. At AWS, we strongly believe in customers using the right tool for the right job. And when we talk about video workflows, we like to largely categorize them into uh, on-demand workflows and light workflows. When we talk about on-demand, we think that S3 is probably your go-to solution. We have some very large video providers in this space using S3 today, running these kinds of workflows, and they've been very successful. You could run these workflows on Media Store. You just would not be getting your best bang for buck. The other side is live workflows. This is where Media Store really shines. We've seen that for most video workflows where the encoder does most of the transcoding and packaging and encryption, uh, Media Store works really well. It is highly performant, it's lightweight, and you have a lot of transparency over what's happening. 
and it is inexpensive, so it works really well. There are, of course, a class of customers who require uh, a lot more features, such as digital rights management or DRM and just-in-time packaging for long-tail content. At Elemental, we do have another origin service called Elemental Media Package, which is probably a better fit for those kinds of workflows. That said, Media Store does not really do much in specifically the video space. We are agnostic to the data payload. So when we have workflows that have nothing to do with video, we're still quite useful. So we have today several customers running completely non-video workflows, such as Scratch Spaces and ML Analytics. So these are workspaces where a few objects get a lot of transactions, and they create what's called as a hot object. So this creates hotkey issues in other object stores, uh, but Media Store avoids these. So for those kinds of workflows, we would strongly urge you to consider Media Store as part of your application stack. That said, our reference workflow is still going to be a video workflow. So this is your happy path, bog standard video workflow. You have a capture device that is pushing content to an encoder. This does not need to be an elemental encoder. We're agnostic to a service provider. And this encoder is going to point its output to an origin, which is a media store uh, container. So the media store container exposes its output in the form of a URL. So this path is also exposed to the CDN for it to do the gets. Our pricing plan is pretty straightforward. We have three dimensions, ingest optimization, storage, and requests. Our storage and request pricing closely mimic Amazon S3, and we charge a per gigabyte ingest optimization fee. For more information on pricing, please visit the pricing page on the AWS website. And that concludes our presentation. Hope you had a great time with this presentation. Thank you.